Thank you so much for joining our walking tour. We are super excited to talk about uh, Broadway, what the city has done with the street. We're joined by Emily from DOT, so she can really talk to us as we go about all the work they've done. And then we also have Ed Janoff from uh, Union Square Bid, and we'll be joined by a few other co-guides as we go. Said we're trying to talk about some of the different things that we're using our curb for in New York City. A little over a decade ago, uh, DOT uh, really reimagined a whole series of public spaces along Broadway. Massive paradigm shift, looking at how much space we have on the street and who's using it, and really reallocating the street space to the majority of users. As part of that project, major uh, public space transformations happened kind of in each of the premier districts along the corridor. So there was Union Square, Flatiron, uh, Garment District, Herald Square, and Times Square. And that was really um, a, kind of an amazing, amazing culture shift along the corridor. When we got to Union Square, there were all sorts of opportunities that really were hidden in plain sight. One of the first things that we did was turn 17th Street into a one-way street. Um, we eliminated the deadhead where you had Broadway going straight into 14th Street and intersecting directly with University Place. And these kinds of frictions really were upsetting to people in this area. And so we provided some relief some urban acupuncture. Broadway used to come straight down there, all right? Union Square used to basically be a traffic circle. Up in front of us is a pedestrian street. Broadway from 14 to 15 is not open to through traffic, and actually um, also from 16 to 17. So you have two blocks of uh, pedestrian street there. Um, but it was the advent of the green market that we're gonna walk through in 1976 that used the area around the park, which was just basically angle parking started to use it as public space, and it started to express itself as an area for programming and public use. You're standing at the intersection of a shared street and a dedicated busway. So in 2019, 14th Street was converted from four lanes of general traffic into dedicated bus and truck only. And you see on top of the street lights, there's these little cameras. Um, it's enforced by license plates. So there's signage and painting on the roadway that says it's buses only. Um, but if you drive through it, you will get a ticket if you're a private vehicle. We need to make it possible for people to get around easily. And buses are, I think, the secret sauce of a city. So creating the select bus service, again, not a lot of time, not a lot of money. We can be imaginative in reallocating the space on our street and using it to move people more effectively and safely and affordably. And those are the kind of investments that we need to do to move forward in New York City. We're not going to accommodate the millions of more people that are going to move to New York City by millions of more cars. When they put in the 14th Street busway, there was a lot of talk about the chaos it would cause and the you know the streets in the neighborhood and around it. The 13th Street would be madness. Um, and instead, we saw none of that. We just saw a great example of traffic evaporation. The, the side streets are still very clear relatively, and we just don't have the traffic we had on 14th Street. We are on University Place between 13th and 14th Streets. The pedestrian plaza a go go. Now, we're not worried about cars coming to hit us. Someone just called my name recently, and I stopped. We had a nice conversation. That wouldn't happen if you're in a car. That happens when you're like, you know, walking around, safe, nice, all that stuff. So it encourages walking, cycling, it's better for our health, it's better for the city, it's better for the environment. Anything to reduce the car traffic. So this is good, you know? And it's also beautiful. Look at the green. There's colors on the ground, the blue bikes. I remember when city bikes came out and people were like, oh, it's blue and it's ruining the landscape. It's ruining like this. It's like now it's part of the landscape. It's part of our visual landscape. So what we've done here is we've built in the chicane, which is like the S-curve. That really, for us, helps enforce, and you can watch as the a vehicle goes through, they really have to kind of snake through the space and move slowly. We also really try to build in um, cycling amenities. And then you'll also see we have the darker color gravel on the street. 
So that's really an indication to cars. They're entering a different kind of space. They really are an invited guest. Very quickly, folks, this mural was implemented uh, last month. It's the third annual version of the Union Square Busway Street Mural. DOT put in this busway in 2019, and it created additional pedestrian space. This mural is called Union with the Universe by artist Vanessa Alvarez. And this is a story about uh, climate change and environmental justice. Um, she felt it was really important in Union Square, where the first Earth Day happened in 1972. So we are at the South Plaza of Union Square. This is probably the most significant civic space in New York City. Um, it's always had a history of being a place that's used for protests and demonstrations for free expression, really because of its central location and its convenience uh, for transit. We're standing on top of the fourth busiest subway station in New York City. Our vision here is to take a look at this 14th Street busway, the pedestrian streets on Union Square West. Um, there's a two-way bike lane on Union Square East, and you're gonna see the farmer's market, more pedestrian space, and more bike lanes around the north side of the square. How do we turn that all into a coherent vision for the future? And what we concluded after about two years of community outreach and design was we felt that Union Square should be one coherent public space from building to building. The street would be built out at sidewalk grade on all sides using park pavers so that it would feel like you were in a park when you were approaching the square from the outside and crossing into it. The busway continues to move through it, but the bus is now a guest in a pedestrian space. This is one of the earliest versions of the pedestrianization of Broadway. This is a 2009 implementation. On 17th Street behind us, uh, that used to be where three lanes of Broadway would come down, and that street was two lanes in each direction um, without any bike lane or without any pedestrian space. It was a very dangerous intersection crossing, and people were frequently hit. And everything we just walked through with the Green Market back in 2009 was actually angle parking. Today, it's a public space and a two-way bike lane, which is great for walkers and great for the Green Market. This is 22 to 21. Uh, it is part of a 2017 project that was completed. So we have this chicane, a curved road uh, to slow down drivers. We have our city bike dock on the southwest side. And then we also have this new public seating area. But usually we have our umbrellas up and our seats um, up so that people can enjoy the public seating. Uh, we also have a dining shed behind us. Um, so you can see the different considerations that were put into designing this block. So welcome to the South Plaza. We have two key stakeholders on this block. We have, of course, the Flatiron Building, and then we also have the Madison Green Condominium. While this shared street was being designed, we took into consideration their loading dock. We also expanded the South Plaza uh, in 2017. Um, to make it wider and then have this, this bike lane. But when you think about the Union Square story, it actually didn't start in 2010. It started in 2008 when we did our first pilot program in Madison Square Park, where we created 65,000 square feet of pedestrian space and shortened the largest crosswalk in New York City. And we did that by realigning Broadway because you had a very busy three intersection crossing of the grid and we simplified it. And that simple intervention really dramatically reduced injuries, improved the livability of the area, and became our first test case, which also allowed us to start to narrow Broadway. Welcome to the North Plaza. This raised turf area was actually the pedestrian median between Fifth Ave and Broadway that pedestrians could use, but now we've expanded it. So what we're standing on right now is old Broadway roadbed. This was like a Times Square light, um, but very, very challenging in its own right. The first time that DOT had ever taken this much space. People said it wasn't going to work, as they always do. They said no one will want to sit here next to traffic. Um, I have this photo from day one where you're standing oh, yes. now, before <laughs> any gravel went down. It's just orange barrels, and on day one, people started filling the space. These are art students from the School of Visual Art on 23rd Street, who just came and started sketching. 
On an average day, we see around 75,000 people go through. It really is a magnetic point in our neighborhood. As you can see, the view of the Flatiron Building is amazing. The space here is shaped in a way that helps pedestrian and cyclist safety. We saw a 30% reduction in crashes. Um, but you also see the, the difference in nature. This is much more about uh, people moving, people watching a lot, uh, you know, very dynamic. And then you see the park has similar traits, but also respite, a lot, a lot more green. This is actually the only portion of Broadway that goes uptown. So this was actually um, created because there was a big desire line previously to cross Fifth Ave. It would be from that red curb over there all the way across to the park, um, which is a very, very long stretch uh, to cross in one go. So we added this uh, area and the seating. We have the Adirondack chairs, the lawn chairs, uh, which are very well enjoyed, as well as these kind of bistro tables and umbrellas. So this is actually our very first shared street um, that we did in any kind of recent history in, um, in New York City. The original public space project here in Flatiron, it never actually closed a street. Like there was actually so much um, over design of street, we were able to build so much public space. So really the only vehicles that are using this street are the vehicles that need access to this block. And that fundamentally changed the character and the nature of this space. But it, Broadway is a great street, it's got this great iconic name, but it's really been a kind of a thoroughfare for drivers for, for decades. And Broadway doesn't really need to be that big, big avenue, but it's used for drivers to go downtown and cross town, and that's really what it did. And so taking a bigger picture look at what Broadway was doing and restoring it to the grid allowed us to actually start to do the kind of urban acupuncture that allowed us to reduce the kind of pinch points in the system. So now we are entering Nomad Piazza. This is really our most recent project. It just wrapped. So from 2-5, 25th Street to 26th Street, and then 26th Street to 27th Street, they are now full plaza blocks. So right now you will see an influx of outdoor dining on the next two blocks. Um, largely because this project, Nomad Piazza, was really birthed out of COVID and social distancing efforts. Uh, so in 2020, uh, this was shut down as part of Open Streets program uh, through DOT. One thing we do have is a new two-way bike lane. Really, we were seeing Broadway being used as a two-way bike lane. Um, and then through this, we were actually able to make it formalized and safer for those people traveling both uptown and downtown. This block for me is such uh, an amazing indicator of kind of how we continue to evolve. Excited to have the two-way uh, bike lane here, and it will be something that we think about for the entirety of the corridor. Pre-pandemic, there was a restaurant on this corner who is no longer here, who was animate that this street needed to be a basic street. We couldn't add any additional amenities for pedestrians and cyclists. So pre-pandemic, the plan for this block was just to keep it like a normal block of Broadway. We saw in the pandemic what it means to have less vehicles on New York City streets, and it doesn't mean our streets are safer with less vehicles. And it really, for us, reinforced um, all of the design strategies in the Broadway Vision Plan where we need self-enforcing, slow-speed streets. And it really, for us, also galvanized the design ideas here as really important to translate citywide and start thinking about how we use slow streets, shared streets, and more uh, plaza spaces, more kind of bike boulevard uh, designs kind of across the city. And um, it's a lot of how we're thinking about continuing to evolve our most successful open streets citywide. This is called Greeley Square. We're in like the bow tie of Broadway and 6th Avenue. The uh, other, the northern side of 34th Street is called Herald Square, famously in front of Macy's. Um, and so this was originally part of the 2009 project along with Times Square to create these pedestrian spaces. A different management organization takes care of this space. It's another business improvement district called the 34th Street Partnership. They also have a different philosophy, which is to what they describe as manage the hell 
out of every square inch of public space here because if they don't, other uses that are maybe a little bit more negative would take root. So they, that's why you see a music performance, ping pong, you're just gonna see more and more stuff as we move through their space. It's also another really um, interesting indicator space where we closed a whole additional block of Broadway and no one kind of said much, you know, to relatively little fanfare, which is a little bit of like, a, oh great, this is like, this has been normalized. This is what people, you know, are expecting from our streets. So I just want to give you some quick anecdotes. Again, this was part of the 2009 project that included Times Square. Uh, Macy's was one of the hardest partners to get on board with this idea. This is their front entrance. They were able to understand the value of this public space. Herald Square had been maintained as a park in front of Macy's for a long time. But what they had to make sure is that anything that happened here could be cleared out of the way so that the Thanksgiving Day Parade could come through. After uh, more and more pedestrianization happened on Broadway, they came around to the idea of actually having the parade come down 6th Avenue, which it does today. Broadway actually made the traffic network very complicated at the intersections of the major streets. Sixth Avenue goes northbound, Broadway went southbound, 34th Street was two-way. It was a three-phase signal that caused a lot of delays in traffic. Bloomberg was famous for saying, although he didn't coin this, he said, in God we trust, everybody else bring data. Um, and so there was a lot of data involved in this project, and the most advanced at the time in 2009 was that all the city taxi cabs had just been uh, outfitted with GPS. So they were able to get um, you know, really undeniable data about how long it took to get from the 20s to the 40s or the 50s through the area that this project had happened. And they'd shown that travel uh, speeds increased and travel time decreased. So in the end, it was actually a pedestrian project that improved traffic at the same time. We're standing here on Broadway between Herald Square and Times Square in a plaza block, a fully pedestrianized block. No motor vehicles allowed, just beautiful cafe tables and a bike lane. The Garment District Alliance has done a tremendous job with all of the blocks between Herald Square and Times Square, adding different public art, adding trees and planters. On this block, we have three sculptures by the artist Joy Brown that have been delighting people all summer long. And over the years, there have been a number of really great public art installations in these blocks. Seesaws for kids to play on, a big LED light tunnel, sculpture by different artists. There's always something fun in this area. So this year I worked with the Garment District Alliance to stage a project in this particular plaza block. It's called the MP3 Experiment, a series I do every summer where people are listening to instructions on headphones. We had around 2,000 people running around this plaza block having some good old-fashioned fun together, strangers coming together. The finale was people blowing bubbles. We had tens of thousands of bubbles being blown. And it was so exciting to me to be able to activate this new public space and to be able to show people what a public space can be. And then, of course, we took that example in that toolkit up to Times Square and we realigned Times Square similarly where we had three intersections and we brought them to two intersections by realigning the grid. And of course that was a public space success story that you know you've heard the world over and it became it was terrific for business. It became one of the top ten retail locations on the planet. Traffic fatalities are down and traffic moved better than it had before because we realigned the system and we took a bigger picture look at how the grid was aligned. Well, the transformation at Times Square has just been remarkable. Before the pedestrian infrastructure and the plazas were put in, the sidewalks were dangerously crowded and people ended up getting pushed out into traffic lanes. It was unsafe and it was unpleasant. And there's just been so many improvements there to make it easier to be a pedestrian, to be on foot. It's brought people out. Times Square is crowded like never before. We're already above pre-pandemic foot traffic, and it's because it's much safer and much more pleasant, not just to walk through, but to sit, to enjoy the weather, to enjoy an afternoon. If anything, I feel like we probably need to do even more.
Hi, Mom. So it looks like there are probably like at least 60 bikes here which accommodate 60 people, or you could accommodate three giant-sized SUVs or vanity pickup trucks.